warm welcome to Kogi in Focus, a weekly program that beams its flashlights on happenings in and around Kogi, the Nigeria Confluence State. I'm Khadijat Mohammed. In today's package, Kogi Governor gets on both state governorship aspirants' accolade after primary election. Kogi government hand over the Confluence Beach Hotel to Capital Boutique Limited for management and remodeling. Kogi Commissioner Ashiru appointed member of the federal government at Jakuta implementation team. This and many more after this break. Welcome back. The federal government committee on solid minerals and natural resources has included Kogi State Commissioner for Finance, Budget and Economic Planning, Asiwaju Ashiru Idris, as part of the Ajakuta Presidential Project Implementation Team. This was made public by a visiting team to Kogi State led by the Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Olaleko Adebite, and the Chairman of the Committee, Senator Tanko Almakura, who promised to involve the state government and the people in its drive to revive the mining sector at Jakuta in the state. The team was welcomed by the State Deputy Governor Edward Onoja at Government House Lokoja. Kogi State boasts of more than 20 different deposited solid minerals still untapped and the state government called on the federal government and well-meaning investors to join hands with it to revive the sector in line with the country's efforts to diversify the economy away from oil. The Kogi state government, under the leadership of His Excellency Alaji Aya Adozabilo, has created a Kogi state ministry of solid mineral and natural resources under the oversight of a commissioner to drive the process. We are open for business in this all-important and richly endowed area. We urge our August visitors to carry this message to the world. The Federal Government's Committee on Mines and Solid Minerals explained the reasons behind its latest drive to revive the sector. We are here to see for ourselves the challenges, prospects, and efforts that have been put in place to reactivate this industry. On the Ajakuta Steel Company, Mines and Solid Minerals, the Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Ola Mileko Adepite, said plans are on the way to get the complex up and running as soon as possible. And I see a very bright future for all of us. In two, twenty years' time, when Ajakuta will start production, if Ajakuta were to start production today, we will employ over 10,000 people. He said a team from Russia will arrive in Nigeria to get things going as soon as ban on international flights is lifted. President Muhammad Bwari has done us very proud by starting this process in Russia sometime in October last year. And the process is well underway. We've had a slight delay because of the COVID-19 pandemic. He used the opportunity to announce the decision of the federal government to appoint Asuwaju Ashiru Idris as one of the committee members saddled with the responsibility of plotting the Ajakuta State Company's revival. An elated Asuwaju Idris promised to live up to expectations. We have to thank Governor Abelou for the vision he has to ensure that the asset work. And by the grace of God, from my appointment as a member of the team and with the support of the good people of Kogi State, we will ensure that um, the idea of President Muhammad Buhari is achieved. The committee members, which also includes senators from Nigeria's mineral producing states, later moved to Ajakuta for an on the spot assessment of the Moribond Steel Complex. In a bid to boost the internal revenue of the state, create more employment for the youth, build the state as an attractive space for more investors who are willing to invest in the state. The state government, through the Office of Kogi Investment and Properties Limited, has handed over the Confluence Beach Hotel to Capital Boutique Limited for management and remodeling. The official handover of the hotel to Capital Boutique was held on the 14th of July 2020 at the premises of the Confluence Beach Hotel in Lokoja, the state capital. The managing director of Kogi Properties and Investment Limited, Hajia Aisha Suleiman, who spoke on behalf of the entire management of Kogi Properties and Investment, highlighted some of the reasons 
conditions and terms behind the lease of the hotel to an investor. She said the hotel requires an overhaul remodeling costing billions of naira, which is very difficult for the state government to incur for now as more attentions are needed in completing so many ongoing projects across the state. The hotel will operate and manage with the same name Lokoja Conflex Beach Hotel and Gulf's Resort Limited. The investor will continue to partner with Kogi State Government throughout their tenure within the stipulated time for the lease. The, she emphasized that with the agreement and for the avoidance of doubt, the hotel is not sold out to any company or group. The project is in line with the present administration under the leadership of Yahya Adosa Bello blueprint and commitment towards the social economic development of the state, which will also contribute greatly to the internal revenue of the state and it will equally create more jobs for the youth. Aisha said upon the completion and when fully operating, the hotel will not only put the state on the world map, it will also attract more investors and become center of activities to the federal government in view of its standards. Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello and members of his committee have received commendation for conducting a credible, peaceful and transparent primary election exercise. The commendation and accolades was given by some of aspirants and they just concluded on the state APC governorship primary election that produced Rotimi Akeredolu as the candidate for the coming election. One of the aspirants, Olusola Iji, who spoke said the Belo led election committee did a great job for conducting a very peaceful, transparent and credible primary. Uh, for your patience, your understanding, uh, when we first met on Sunday, so we have some logistic problems in terms of accreditation and, and you, you are open to suggestions and I'm very good what you did yesterday but I, I won't say it's perfect but it's, uh, I don't think any of us would fault it. If I wanted to say congratulations and uh, my successful primary. Uh, I had my reservation before the cameras, but what I saw, participation, um, I'm satisfied. He commended Governor Bello for his intervention and wisdom he brought in managing the differences among the aspirants on the eve of the election. When I saw this sort of the way it was going, I had to go to the sex industry to complete it. I didn't wait for it to come. So I, I'm happy. Thank you, sir. And now I'm taking away all this lecture of science, the lesson. Uh, we learn everything. I can assure you that I'm going to be part of coordinator in the state, retired Commander Tunde Giwa Daramola, in a statement in Akure, congratulated Governor Rotimi Akere Dolu on his victory at the primary while commending the chairman of the election committee, Governor Yahya Bello and his committee members for a peaceful conduct of the election. Governor Bello urged Chief Olusola and other aspirants to join hands with the party's candidate to win the general election. The National Association of Kogi State Students, NACOS, and the Student Union Government, SUG, Kogi State Polytechnic Chapters, has felicitated with the acting rector of Kogi State Polytechnic, Lokoja, Dr. Salis Usman, on his successful 100 days in office. The students who visited separately under their respective umbrella and led by their chapter presidents, Ismaila Abdumalik Ozovehe and Oguche Teino, commended the acting rector for his efforts and achievements within a short period in office. They said this president has restored dignity of students. They gave highlight of some of his achievements that have direct impact on students. These include committee membership, improvement of security by blocking multiple entrances into the campus, building a befitting security house, and putting in place a 30-bed health center as against the three-bed clinic inherited. Other achievements mentioned by the student bodies include floor overlay and total renovation of the 500-seat lecture theater, renovation of LTA and LTB,
campus beautification and the release of money to get two new buses for the SUG to run the administration. They pledged absolute support and promised to ensure all students are law-abiding when school resumes. The acting rector in his response appreciated the groups for the show of love and encouraged them to be dedicated to their studies, stressing that the seed of greatness lies within them. He pointed out that he was a student like them and now the first alumnus and youngest ever to be appointed as acting rector, meaning they too could do much more if they show commitment. The management of Baysan Limited, a management consulting company in Ajakuta, has dismissed the petition written by a group, United Ajakuta Local Government Communities, to Oil Self Limited, handling the Ajakuta Kaduna Kanu pipeline, against its company, saying it is baseless, misleading, and mischievous. Speaking in Ajakuta, the project manager of Baysan Limited, Moshud Lamidi, noted that outsourcing of labor is a global practice and called on the authors of the said petition to desist from giving false information to the public. Recall that a group united Ajakuta local government communities in an undated letter of complaint written to the MD CEO Oysev Limited had kicked against the use of labor contractor for salary payments for the AKK project. They said that the decision is arising from past experiences with labor contractor in some of the companies around Ajakuta that they have it on good authority that the project management team in Kogi State are already considering Baysan Nigeria Limited for labor. But Baysan Limited project manager, while dismissing this claim, said there are guidelines for outsourcing of labor from registered company who meets those criteria while noting that those individuals who are signatories to the said petition are not representing anyone but their individual interest. Moshu said they are not even aware that those staff have already been engaged and are happy with their welfare package and conditions of engagement. However, a visit to the company showed that both OSF and the workers are happy with the company, based on limited as the consultants to the firm. Mukadam Asiwaju Asiwu Idris, the Honorable Commissioner of Finance, Budget and Economic Planning, who doubles as the forum chairman of all commissioners in Kogi State, has sent out his heartfelt congratulations to Honorable Justice Henry Olusi and Honorable Justice Bayo Oluo Shagun over their appointment by the visionary and actionable governor of Kogi State, Yahya Adozabelo, as acting chief judge and acting president of the Customary Court of Appeal, respectively. In a message personally signed and released through his media aid, extol the plausible pedigree and the impeccable character of the appointed jurist describing their choice as an eloquent testimony of their commendable meritorious year of service that have seen to the entrenchment of justice delivery and growth of the judicial system in the state. He said Oku Nation is bountifully blessed for having their illustrious sons at the driver's seat of the administration of justice in the state saying they shall deliver on their mandate. Asiwaju expressed confidence in their ability to add value to the jurisprudence and protect the sanctity and sacredness of the law temple. In his words, he asserted that with their years of incredible service and cognate experience as law officers, there is high hope the judiciary under their watch will be truly independent and also give complimentary support to other arms of government to take Kogi to the next level as emphasized and planned by Governor Yahya Bello. As he was, you commended Governor Yahya Adosa Bello for his timely action towards filling the vacuum created by unfortunate and shocking demise of Honorable Justice Nasiru Ajana, the SY Chief Judge and Honorable Justice Shaibu Atadoga, the SY President of Customary Court of Appeal. He said this singular but prompt action of the governor has once again reinforced his belief in our constitutional democracy and further promotes him as a core democrat whose respect for the rule of law, cum processes of appointment of justices is highly commendable. Governor Yahya Bello is indeed a leader committed to the full functionality of the judiciary and quest to change the state narrative positively. He wished the new justices milestones of achievement in office as they captain the shape of our judiciary. Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello has held Major General David Medayese Jemi Bello retired on the occasion of his 80th birthday celebration. The governor added that his patriotic zeal for the nation 
took him into the Nigerian Army in 1960, where he served in various capacities as he distinguished himself in all and rose to the enviable rank of a major general. Governor Bello stated that in addition to his illustrious service in the Nigerian Army, where he manned strategic positions such as General Officer Commanding 1st Infantry Division and as Adjutant General, he equally served as Military Governor of the now defunct Western Region, where he made valuable contributions to the development of the Nigerian nation. He mentioned again that after leaving the Army, following a successful career, he became a fearless advocate for victims of high-handed display of power by government, stating that it was on record that the general helped to save the life of his former brother-in-arms, General Olusegun Obasanjo, who later became president upon Nigeria's return to democracy in 1999. The governor noted his post-army career as a legal practitioner was also marked with outstanding success, and even when he became the Minister of Police Affairs under former President Olusegun Obasanjo, he helped push forward massive reforms which are still benefiting the Nigerian police today. He stated that in all his life has been one continuous odyssey of service to his fatherland, such he noted is the practical definition of patriotism. Even at this golden age, he has remained unrelenting in service as he continued to play significant roles as an elder and father to both state and national level. The governor prayed that the Almighty God will continue to strengthen the celebrants and keep him healthy so that the younger generation could keep tapping from his wealth of knowledge and experience for many more years to come. Former Kogi State Governor Ibrahim Idris has congratulated Chief Clarence Olafemi as a clock 70. Ibrahim Idris in a message described Chief Olafemi as a dependable ally both in his public and personal life. He said his real privilege in his life sojourn is an indication of his humble beginning and orientation as a successful man both in public service, politics and business world. Ibrahim Idris prayed for more years to the High Chief of Mopalan in his quest for more service to humanity and his fatherland. He further described Chief Clarence Olafemi as a real gem whose desire for good governance overrides his personal interests and dictates the unique ways of his political association. Idris maintained that Olafemi's bluntness, fearlessness, and steadfastness had earned him a lot of prestige, both in his immediate society, Kogi State, and Nigeria at large. Speaker of the Kogi State House of Assembly, Prince Matthew Kolawole, has congratulated the DCG Obafaye, popularly known as Oga at the top, on his well-deserved elevation to the rank of Deputy Commandant General by the Board of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps. The Speaker said that the cheering news of the promotion of DSG Obafaye, considering his monumental contributions to the agency as a committed and dedicated officer over the years, is commendable. He described Obafaye as a pragmatic and workaholic officer that has consistently distinguished himself at his duty post wherever he has been posted to serve within the agency in the country. He commended his professionalism in discharging his constitutional responsibility as an officer of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, urging him to see his elevation as an opportunity to do more in the service of his fatherland. He said Obafaye is one of the shining lights that have made Kogi State proud as a gallant officer who has progressed through the ranks to his present position, praying that God shall continue to guide him, grant him wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and good health to pilot the affairs of his new responsibility. Prince Matthew Kolawale also, on behalf of the good people of Kababunu State constituency, entire members of the Seventh Assembly, management and staff of the Kogi State House of Assembly, and join the family members and other well-wishers to rejoice with Obafaye on his well-deserved elevation. The Kogi State Special Advisor to the Governor on Multilateral, Donor Agencies and Special Projects and State Focal Person National Social Investment Program, Abdukarim Onyeke Suleiman, has been honored with an Ambassador of Ethics and Global Citizen of Conscience Award by an NGO, the Center for Ethics and Self Value Orientation. Presenting the award to Onyekehi at the SIP office in Lokoja, the executive director of the NGO, Prince Yakubu Salim Musa, eulogized the recipients for his outstanding performance since his assumption of office.
Onyeke, he who doubles as the Kogi State Focal Person of Social Investment Program, SIP, was described by Yakubu as a reflection of ethical public officer whose conduct had been secretly investigated and confirmed as a trustworthy public servant with conduct, compliance, and a sharp contrast from the general perception against Kogi and SIP in the past years. Prince Yakubu, who is the founder of National Youth Parliament of Nigeria, NYPN, further commended the reforms, innovations, and effective management the Kogi SIP office is now witnessing under the able leadership of Onye Kehi. He said they secretly investigated the activities of the office through tactical deployment of their whistleblowers to monitor the conduct and activities of this agency. And they are glad to declare that Onyekehi conduct has ranked him among the top 12 highly rated, ethically responsible NSIP state in 2020. He was therefore decorated as an ambassador of ethics and global citizen of conscience, presented with a gold medal and a certificate of credence, thus inducting him among the 100 integrity icons of Nigeria. The elated special advisor Onyekehi thanks Sezvo for considering him worthy of such lofty and surprising recognition. Onyekehi assured the organization of his commitment to better service delivery to the good people of Kogi State in fulfillment of Governor Yahya Bello's new direction mandate. The focal person, however, cited the burden of inherited challenges that thwarted the progress of the SIP implementation in Kogi State. The Kogi State Primary Health Care Development Agency in Lokoja has commenced a three-day training on handling and management of vaccine for immunization officers across the state. The participants at the training are local immunization officers and coaching officers from the 21 local government areas of Kogi State. In his re opening remarks, the Executive Director of Kogi State Primary Healthcare Community Development Agency, Dr. Abu Bakar Yakubu, said the training was expected to equip participants with adequate knowledge on proper handling and management of vaccine. He added that the training would enable the participants to avoid and reduce vaccine wastages through breakage, exposure to harmful temperature, VVM change, and even expiration of vaccine in their custody. According to Yakobo, the importance of keeping our vaccines sterile and managing them both at the state and local government levels cannot be overemphasized. Vaccines are given to us free, but they are not cheap, and that is why everyone saddled with the responsibility of handling, storing, and administering these vaccines must ensure proper handling procedures. At the state level, the agency has been able to tackle the issue of poor or no power supply for proper vaccine storage by providing 25 tons cold room and 100 kVA solar energy. He said they are keeping vaccine at the recommended temperature with the provision and recent distribution of solar drive refrigerators to the local government areas. We implore you to emulate same gesture and keep vaccine stored properly. We are hopeful that we will receive more SDRs soon to be distributed to health care facilities where they have none but are needed. Yakubu said that the agency had planned a training such as this in the past but was granted for positive funds while commending the UNICEF for their assistance in making the training a reality. He said that a monitoring team had been put in place warning that officers who display lackadaisical attitude to their responsibility would not be spared. He therefore urged the participants to take utmost advantage of the training to update and upgrade themselves with knowledge to function at their best. The state highly appreciates UNICEF and other development partners who bought the expense of this training and contributed to its success. If you're just joining us, this is Kogi in Focus, a weekly program that beams a such light on happenings in and around Kogi State. For your information, event coverage, sponsorship, or advert placement, please call or reach us via social media handles displayed on your screen. A middle-aged man, Godwin Adeoye, a 35-year-old indigen of Kogi State, has been sentenced to two years' imprisonment by a magistrate court sitting in local Char Kogi State on a two-count charge of attempted bombing of some national assets. The judge also gave an option of fine to the convict for being a first offender and his plea of allocators. At the resumed hearing at the local John Magistrate Court, presided by Ibrahim Adeoye, 
pleaded guilty to the offenses. Following his pleading guilty to the offenses and his plea of allocutors, the trial judge convicted the accused under Section 397 of the Kogi State Penal Code. Having pleaded guilty to the offense as a student, the only surviving son of his father and his promise not to repeat the same, the trial judge sentenced Godwin Adeoye to two years imprisonment with option of fine on a two-count charge of criminal intimidation and plan to bomb National Assembly and the NNPC. According to the prosecution, Yahya, who represented the DSS, the accused has threatened the presidential tax force team on COVID-19, demanding for palliative for himself and his group, of which the bombing of the National Assembly and the NNPC. The DSS counsel who prosecuted the matter said they are reviewing the judgment to know whether to go on appeal. Godwin Adeoye was arrested on 13th May 2020 at Ihima, Okehi local government area in Kogi State, following information from the national headquarters of the DSS of threats to bomb national assets if his demands for policy for himself and his group were not met by the presidential task force on COVID-19, had since been in DSS custody. The Ebe Bobo Omo Yoruba, Ajijobawa Orile Ede Odua Nation have said that the unity of Yoruba race is very sacrosanct. The chairman of the Yoruba group, Fabiro Azim, made this known in local Jakogi state during a condolence visit to the family of late first female combat, Tolu Lope Aritule, who died in a car accident. The chairman of the Yoruba group, Fabero Azim made this known in the local Jakogi state during a condolence visit to the family of late first female combat pilot Tonulepe Arotile, who died in an accident in Kaduna. According to him, there is need to stretch the hands of fellowship to the Yoruba people of Kogi state. The group which claimed to be struggling for the independence of Yoruba race was noted that the nation had lost a gallant officer whose death was shrouded in mystery as he described the death of Tolu Lope as a tragedy to the entire royal barriers. He described her as a gallant flight cadet who had achieved a lot within her short sojourn on earth. All the Yoruba groups, both at home and diaspora, identify with the family in this agony and sorrowful period. He noted, he explained that the death is a supreme end of every living soul, stressing that Tony Lopez's death is very painful, particularly when the nation needs her service, praying to God to grant the disease to eternal rest and give the parents and family the fortitude to bear the irreparable loss. Late Tony Lopez's mother expressed gratitude to the visitors. National Youth Council of Nigeria, Kogi State Chapter, in collaboration with student union bodies in the state, have held a candle night in the state capital, Lokuja, for late combat pilot Tony Lope Arotile, who died from injuries sustained from a road accident at Nigerian Air Force Base Kaduna and was buried in Abuja on Thursday. The student said the vacuum in the state created by her death will be difficult to fill and they called on the government to immortalize her. There were grim faces everywhere as representatives of student union bodies at the candle night procession along the streets of Lokoja in honor of one of Kogi State's most promising ambassadors, late combat pilot officer Tolu Lokwe Arutile. <laughs> Representatives of the various student and youth groups present called on the federal and state governments and the Nigerian Air Force to immortalize late Tolu Lokwe for her outstanding achievements in a short space of time. This is a story of gone too soon, but what more can we say? If we had the powers, if we have the powers to bring Tolu Lokwe back, we will do that. You all agree with me that when Tolu Lokwe was alive, she was not celebrated as she's supposed to be. Now, upon her death, we will not rest until Tolulokwe is immortalized. Late Ali was from Kogi State. We lost him. Now, Tolulokwe, we want to beg the Nigerian army that at the moment, right now, we have one Major General Adeni Sheik Olushegun about to be court martialed from Kogi State. They should please, it's an appeal, they should please tamper justice with mercy and allow this man be.
in the course of her death, we are learning great lessons in her little transit in life. And we also use this opportunity to call on the youths to be steadfast and diligent in whatever they are doing. Let her lifestyle that she has lived be an emulation to us. They referred to her as a heroine who has created a vacuum difficult to fill. Representative of the Arotile family thanked the students for identifying with them during the trial time. We don't have many of our type who, who is able to achieve so much in this short time. The family, Arotile family, they are greeting you. They are saying thank you so much for associating with us in this hour trial period. We are thanking every one of you and we are saying that by the, by the grace of God you will achieve your dreams in Jesus name. The remains of 24-year-old Tolu Lokwe Arutile, who was Nigeria's first female combat helicopter pilot, were interred after a ceremony with full honors at the military cemetery Abuja. Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello said the sacrifices of the Nigerian first female helicopter combat pilot linked to Lulope Arotele cannot be forgotten as a nation. Governor Bello, who was at the National Military Cemetery Abuja, where the remains of the late flying officer was laid to rest on 23rd of July 2020, said to Lulope as a young female pilot who fought for the peace of the nation both on land and in the air and died in active service remain a huge inspiration for both men and women in the country. The governor, through his chief press secretary, Omogo Mohammed, who released a press statement to journalists in Lokoja, said, Late Tolulope Arotile will be remembered as one of those who risked their lives and were being willing to put service before self in order to protect the freedom we enjoy. Bello said, behind every decorated grave of a fallen air officer, soldier, and naval officer is a story of grief that came to a family or a community, but assured that late Arotile's legacy will be cherished even while she has gone to rest. He extolled Arotile's bravery, commitment, patriotism, and professionalism, noting that her short life was impactful, a complete book of history, and a motivation to improve girl-child education and the development of young ones. Tony Lope, who hails from Ijumu local government area of Kogi State, died on July 14 in a motor accident at Nigeria Air Force Base in Kaduna at the age of 24. The governor of Kogi State, Yahya Adoza Bello, ably represented by the deputy governor Edward David Onoja, on the 24th of July, was in Ibado, Apacha, Omala local government area of Kogi State, where the late Chief Justice Shuaibu Atadoga was laid to rest. The event, which pulled together dignitaries from all walks of life to celebrate an icon, was a befitting exit for a man regarded by all as a revolutionary. Bello described the death of Justice Shuaibu Atadoga as a profound loss. He stated that Justice Shaibu was a God-fearing man who had a listening ear and treated everyone with kindness and mercy. He further stated that Justice Atadoga possessed an unrivaled work ethic with his deep imprints leaving behind a far better Kogi state than he left it. He revealed that Atadoga's accession was not a surprise with his career already distinguished by rare insight, deep thinking and pristine intelligence. Speaking further, Bello said that Justice Atadoga until his death inspired reforms that improved the customary effectiveness. He concluded by saying that Kogi had lost a rare asset and expressed his deepest condolences to all who loved and respected him. Chief Onoja consoled the family, describing the foundation of their matriarch and fellowship with the Lord as an encouragement for many, even in these trying times. He urged the children to hack in greatly into all the lessons from their father and aim to surpass his great name. He charged the community and the younger generation to remember the life of Justice Atadoga and strive to emulate the representation which their illustrious son brought to the local government. Dignitaries present at the occasion include the Acting Chief Judge of Kogi State, Deputy Speaker of Kogi State, House of Assembly, AIG Zone 8, the President of Kogi State Chapter of Christian Association of Nigeria, the Commissioners for Commerce and Industry, Youth and Sports, and other aides of the Deputy Governor. A truck belonging to Dangote Cement Company was set ablaze within the week in Lokoja, the Kogi State capital, for crushing father and son to death. 
Eyewitness account told journalists that the empty truck was about negotiating the bend leading to Zone 8 when it lost control and crushed a pedestrian who was standing by the roadside together with his two sons. While the middle-aged man was crushed alongside one of his sons, who was badly injured, however, Locke smiled on the other person who escaped unhurt. It was gathered that all lookers who witnessed the incident constituted themselves into a mob to attack the truck and set it ablaze. Meanwhile, the state police command, while confirming the incident, said that the truck lost control at the zone 8 roundabout and crushed a pedestrian and injured one other person who is currently receiving treatment at the hospital. The police public relations officer, William Ayer, who spoke to newsmen, said that the incident made the people on the area to take law into their hands and set the truck ablaze. He, however, confirmed the death of one person while the identity of the other one injured could not be immediately ascertained. He said that he is receiving medical attention in the hospital with a full-scale investigation into the matter has commenced. Kogi say team of hunters have killed three kidnappers in a gun battle and two informants arrested early Saturday morning along local Okene Highway. The kidnappers who were planning to stage an attack on people that plied the local Jaokene road met their Waterloo when two of their informants were arrested. The senior special advisor security in charge of Kookehi local government area, Abdurrahim Ohiare, and his Adavi counterpart Joseph Omuya Salami, who led the hunters to the hideouts of the kidnappers following intelligence reports gathered. The hunters who were on patrol at about 4.30 a.m. apprehended the informants one Godwin Peter, a native of EKJ in Olamaboro local government area, and one Sani Habib, a native of Idoji in Okenu local government area. After interrogation, they confessed that they were informants who give information to kidnappers for their operations. They led the hunters alongside the SSA security from Adavi and Okehi to the kidnappers' hideouts. At their hideout, the hunters engaged the kidnappers in gun battle, during which three of them were gunned down, while others escaped with gunshot wounds. Three sophisticated pump-action rifles, bullets, masks, and charms were recovered from the kidnappers. The governor's aide said Governor Yahya Bello has maintained his stand of not negotiating with any criminal elements in the state and advised the criminals to turn a new leaf or get ready to be crushed. This is where we draw the curtain on today's edition. Please join us on this same station, same time next week, for another review of happenings within Kogi State. Kogi in focus, reaching everywhere, informing everybody. Keep doing to others what you want them to do to you. I am Khadijat Mohammed, saying you should always keep COVID-19 preventive care. Goodbye.